Proofs of the trigonometric formulae. In the previous chapters, we met the proofs of trigonometric formulae 1, 2, and 3. We now meet the other proofs that are on our course. We're going to start with formula 4, which is known as the compound angle formula. And it states that cos of A minus B is equal to cos of A cos of B plus sine of A sine of B. This can be found on page 14 of your formula book. Before we prove this formula, it's important to note that in general, cos of A minus B is not equal to cos of A minus cos of B. Just as in algebra, A minus B squared is not equal to A squared minus B squared. In algebra, we develop the formula A minus B squared is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared by writing a minus b squared as equal to a minus b multiplied by a minus b and expanding. So by multiplying at the brackets we'd end up getting to this. In trigonometry the method for of establishing the formula for cos of a minus b is more complicated but has the same objective. So this is the proof of formula for the compound angle formula. So cos of A minus B is going to be equal to cos of A cos of B plus sine of A sine of B. So we're going to let P cos of A sine of A be x2 y2 and Q cos of B sine of B be x1 y1. So we're going to let P and Q two points on the unit circle whose center is O, 0, 0. So here we have the unit circle, center 0, 0, and we have the point P, which is cos of A sine of A, and the point Q, which is cos of B sine of B. We're going to use coordinate geometry distance formula, which is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So the distance from P to Q, so the distance from point P on the circle to point Q on the circle, we're going to find this distance. So we've labelled our points x1, y1, x2, y2, and we're substituting into our formula. So we start with the square root, then we have bracket x2, so it's going to be bracket cos of A minus x1 bracket squared, so cos b bracket squared. Going over the plus, then we have bracket y2, which is sine of a, minus y1, which is sine of b, and all of that is squared. So next, we're going to bring the root over the other side, so we have pq squared on the left hand side and we've gotten rid of the root on the right hand side. Next we need to expand our brackets. So cos of a minus cos of b squared is cos of a minus cos of b multiplied by cos of a minus cos of b. So cos of a multiplied by cos of a gives us cos squared a. Cos of a multiplied by minus cos of b gives us minus cos A cos B and we do it again and we get another one so we end up with minus 2 cos A cos B and then minus cos B multiplied by minus cos B gives us positive cos squared B. So I've done this step out in more detail on the next slide. Likewise sine of A minus sine of B squared gives us sine squared A minus 2 sine of A sine of B plus sine squared B. Next, we have to simplify. So cos squared A and sine squared A give us cos squared A plus sine squared A. That's a very important. It's a trigonometric identity. We'll come back to that in a second. Then cos squared B and sine squared B give us cos squared B plus sine squared B. So again, our trigonometric identity. And then we can factorize 
minus 2 cos of a cos of b and minus 2 sine of a sine of b by bringing the minus 2 outside the brackets. And we get minus 2 times cos of a cos of b plus sine of a sine of b. Now, cos squared a plus sine squared a gives us 1. Cos squared a plus sine squared, squared a gives us 1. This is a trigonometric identity. So cos squared x plus sine squared x will give us 1. Cos squared y plus sine squared y will give us 1. So no matter what the letter is, so long as it's the same, and you've got a cos squared and a sine squared and a plus in between, you end up with 1. This is given to you in your formula book. Likewise, cos squared b plus sine squared b also give us 1. And then we just bring down the minus 2 cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. So p squared equals 1 plus 1 minus 2 cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. So we'll come back to that now in a minute. Next, we're going to use the cosine rule on the triangle OPQ. So OPQ. So the cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2ab cos of a. We're going to take the triangle and we're going to label the angle at the center as angle A. Now the angle at the center is actually called A minus B. So if we take the point on our unit circle 1, 0, so it's the easterly point on our unit circle, we know that this is really 0 degrees when we're using our unit circle and that we work anti-clockwise 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, back to 360 degrees or 0. So if we have a look at this point here, this point P, this is the point cos of A sine of A. So starting at 0 degrees and working our way around, we end up getting to this point P. So since it's P cos of A sine of A, we can say that this angle at the centre here is A. So starting from the easterly point, or starting from 0 degrees, we work our way around and we get as far as here. So this is angle A. Likewise, if we take the point Q, which is cos of B sine of B, again, starting at the easterly point, or 0 degrees, we work our way anti-clockwise, we get up to Q, which is cos of B sine of B. So this angle here is angle B. So if we want to just figure out what the angle in the triangle is, so I'll just zoom in so we can see that a bit better. So this angle here from this point around to this point here. So this angle here, so we're trying to figure out a name for this angle. So from here around to here is angle A. And from here around to here is angle B. So from here to here, we can call A minus B. So angle A, in terms of our formula, what we're going to substitute in to our cosine rule formula, is actually called A minus B. Next, we're going to label the rest of the parts of our triangle. So the side opposite our angle is going to be lowercase a, and then the other two sides are going to be B, and C. It doesn't matter what way you label the B and the C. Remember this is a unit circle, so the radius of our circle is going to be one unit, which means that each of these sides are one unit in length because this is an isosceles triangle. And remember ultimately we're trying to find the distance from P to Q. So we have our formula, now we just have to substitute into our formula. So a squared, this side here of our triangle, is going to be pq squared, the distance from p to q. b squared is going to be 1 squared, because remember b is 1. c squared is going to be 1 squared, again c is 1. Bring down the minus and the 2, the a is 1, the b is 1. And cos of A becomes cos of A minus B. So then we just multiply out whatever we have. So 1 squared becomes 1, 1 squared becomes 1. Minus 2 by 1 by 1 is minus 2. And we still have cos of A minus B. 
Okay, so now we're going to compare 1 and 2. So this being our first equation, equation 1. And this being our second equation, equation 2. So both of them are equal to p squared. We have a 1 plus 1 minus 2. So that's all the same. They can cancel each other out. And then we're left with cos of a cos of b plus sine of a sine of b equal to cos of a minus b. So we bring down the cos of a minus b on the left-hand side. We have our equals. And we bring down the cos of a cos of b plus sine of a sine of b on the right-hand side. So now we can see we have our compound angle formula. So on the next slide, I'm going to show how cos of a minus cos of b squared became cos squared a minus 2 cos a cos b plus cos squared b. And I'm also going to show how sine of a minus sine of b squared became sine squared a minus 2 sine of a sine of b plus sine squared b.